how to get your offer accepted in this crazy market. Hi, Luis Carlos Perez with Center Real Estate. So it's no secret the market's been very crazy, very active. Uh, there's a lot of rumors that the market's gonna crash, that we, we're going into a depression or anything like that, but it, all the signs show the opposite. I don't believe that's really gonna happen. So I wanna tell you how to get that offer accepted. That's a question you might have. You may be a buyer out there in the market that has been outbid several times. I personally have clients that got, have that situation that we got a bid a few times. So it could be very discouraging, especially when, when uh, it's, it's you need a home, you're kind of in a crunch and you need to find a place to live and you keep getting outbid. So I wanna to talk to you about some some tips, some ideas that I have for you to be able to get that offer accepted in this, it's considered seller's market, so in this seller's market, right? So so for starters, it's, it's something that um, you wanna do, it's no secret, I, again, and you probably hear this a lot for different agents, even in different markets, but get pre-approved, get pre-approved, make sure you know your finances, make sure you know what's, what is expected from, from you, from the lender. Uh, you get fully, fully approved. There's a lot of times you go online and get kind of like a pre-approval or you uh, just kind of get a soft inquiry. People are scared of pulling their credit. So this is not the time to be scared of pulling your credit. If you think pulling your credit is gonna affect your credit score, maybe you're not ready to buy a house. If your credit score is that low where it's gonna affect you just by a, a pool on a mortgage inquiry, it, you might not be ready to buy a house. So so make sure you, you're you are strong, you have strong credit. Uh, so get pre-approved so there's there's two ways to do that um so you might i uh, get some information on on how the lending works and everything like that that's another video but uh, there's a pre-approval and then there's a way for lenders to do this where they go and they take your normal application and they do what's called upfront underwriting what that means is they kind of do the underwriting on the loan and then do a deep dive find out really what it takes uh, for you to get approved on your just based on your credit income and debt and and that's kind of um just kind of strategy so you don't get surprised down the line, right? And if, if you provide that information to an, an offer, uh, saying, hey, I've been uh, not just pre-approved, we did offer underwriting, there's other terms, different lenders use it a little differently, but you'll be able to uh, to get that uh, that offer, it looks a lot stronger. Uh, so something else to, to look for is uh, cash, money. So there's, there's a lot of lending out there, there's a lot of loans out there, the example is VA lenders, uh, VA lenders, or not VA lenders, but a VA loan is is a benefit for for military um, families that that you could get into a you could get into a house and you could give pretty much uh, zero down. You don't have to give a down payment for that house, so that's a huge benefit for for a military family to get into a house with the least money possible out of pocket. Now, in today's market, that's that doesn't mean that you're going to go you're not going to you're going to go in into the house and not have any money. You're gonna to have to have some money down. So you need to show proof that you have money and you can sustain that offer. That there's gonna be closing costs, there's gonna be that include title fees, inspections, all sorts of other things. So you need to show that you have money to cover that. Uh, something something that will lead me to this is also having money to cover an appraisal, sh appraisal shortage. So to get homes in this market, a lot of people are offering uh, over list price on a home. They're, they're offering homes that are, they're offering uh, a percentage over asking price of the house and that's just the standard that's how much um, homes are going for so if you look at a house and it's worth X amount of money and you want to offer that same amount the list price it's probably not gonna be a house you're gonna get and you're probably not a very educated buyer talk to your agent and find out what you really need to do to get that house right so that's one thing you need to add for over asking so if you're you're coming in with a loan with zero down expecting to come in and buy a house with zero down it doesn't matter if you offer way over asking it's it's not going to make sense if you don't have money to cover that appraisal shortage so that's another thing is coming up front and showing hey i have i'm going to give you this money down and i have extra money to pay for any shortages on the house appraisal uh something else is um Know where you want to live is very important. If if you're if you're out there and you're jumping in and out of neighborhoods, going from one side of town to the other, and you're not quite sure what area of town you want to be that you're going to be in, that's going to put you at a disadvantage. What happens is you don't you don't understand the market. What I tell my clients is when you're when you're looking for a house and you find out the area you want to live in, this neighborhood, this community, you're going to become like the expert 
in real estate in that area for a short time only. So like for example, I'm a professional realtor licensed in the state of Texas. So I'm, I have to be uh, proficient in the entire city I work in, different neighborhoods, different markets, and all sorts. I have different clients looking for different homes uh, all the time, uh, at any given time. So if, but you are looking in that neighborhood because you want to send your kids to, kids to a specific school or because it's close to work, whatever the reason may be, you're going to become that expert. So you need to become that expert in that neighborhood. You need to know how much homes are going for over asking. You need to know how many uh, days these homes stayed on the market. You need to know the features of the homes that are selling for what mu for how much. You need to know the price per square foot that's going in that neighborhood. There's a lot of things that you're going to learn. And a realtor could guide you through that. And it just there's a bunch of different websites and applications that can let you uh, see that. It's no secret. You could, of course, ask your realtor. Or you could go on to the websites like Zillow, Realtor.com, all sorts of all websites that have this information ready available for the public. And you kind of look and do your study and see what's what's happening. So if you see homes in that neighborhood are going, uh, taking three, four, or five days to sell, and you you want to wait ten days to make a decision, and that house is going to be sold. That's that's part of that. Or if you you see those homes that are selling in a matter of hours or days. They're not going for list price, they're going for above that. So you, that's kind of an indication of what's going on. So that's another tip is become an expert. So when something comes up, you know the worth, you know you want it or not, and then you could make a, de uh, a decision quickly. What happens with a lot of home buyers right now is they, they, they get, you get scared, which is normal. You're hesitant, which is normal. You don't know what's going on, which is kind of normal, but you want to be educated. So if you're educated, you're in the know, you know what's going on, you're, you're guided by a, a strong realtor, you're going to be comfortable making that offer immediately. I have clients that make an offer without looking for a house. That's a sight unseen. I'm not saying to do that, but just just know that there's people doing that. There's people making an offer sight unseen because I know the neighborhood. I know that style of house. I know that floor plan. I like it. Let's make an offer. And then you can still do other stuff, check inspections and, and, and uh, all other, other things for the house, of course, right? But it leads me to the next point, inspection. So so a lot of homes, you do ask your realtor, this is something the public usually doesn't have access to, but when you're gonna submit an offer or you see a house pop up online, you could ask your realtor, hey, is there an existing inspection report? A lot of home sellers, like personally I asked uh, the people that list the house with me is, hey, get an inspection report. And, and it's, there's a lot of benefits for the seller, but if there's one available, the seller should be able to provide that to you, to your realtor. So. Uh, ask for that if it's available you could review that you can see what deficiencies are on the home you can see if anything was addressed already or not and this way it will make it more comfortable for you to make that offer you know that's so so that's uh, that's something to look for uh, another thing that's kind of required by law some agents delay in getting this document or not but there's there's a document put out by the state of texas and it's probably the same for other states which is the seller's disclosure notice. So the seller disclosure notice will give you an indication of anything that could be deficient with the house. The seller is required to tell you if they know about that. They're required to tell you if there's any insurance claims that happened in a certain timeline, if there's inspection reports that have happened. So that kind of gives you, uh, it should, it's not very insightful, but it should give you a little bit more peace of mind if it's a very clean report. You could tell by the way somebody fills it out how, how clean the house is a lot of times. And, oh. Okay. going back to knowing the area so it's not just about knowing the area online and looking at stats which are important but it's not just that it's important to hey i want to live in this neighborhood drive around you're going to go see a house on saturday evening drive around the neighborhood i tell my clients hey we, just, we like the house you like the house or you're thinking about it do me a favor drive around the neighborhood right after we leave the showing drive around the neighborhood go a few blocks out go check out the neighborhood park go, go drive by the schools see how far the highway is for, for your commute, how far you're gonna be going for, for work, for schools, for church, for all that, look around it. The best time to look at a neighborhood is uh, weekdays in the evening, especially spring and summer. You could really tell how a neighborhood holds up in spring and summer. Is there kids playing out there, people cleaning their yards, mowing the lawn, um, or is it a neighborhood where all of a sudden there's cars that line up the streets and maybe it looks pretty in the morning and it's not looking as pretty at, at night. Also, you see it um, at different times of so see it at different times of day, weekend, weekdays, just so that you know how it looks. And you might say, hey, I like the neighborhood, but that street, XYZ street, I don't wanna live there. I know that area. Or you know what, this house, I, I know what street that's on and is that busy corner. I love the neighborhood, but I, I don't wanna live in that busy corner. So it'll save you a lot of time when you're looking for a house because right now, the way the market is, 
uh, time is of the essence. Everything is moving super, super fast. So time is of the essence. You want to be informed of that neighborhood you live in. And that's time to make an offer. So what do you do is, of course, like we go back to that pre-approval, try to get everything as clean as possible. Having a strong lender is also important. If it's a lender that's known in the community, it's going to be easier for you get that, to get that offer approved, right? Somebody, a reputable company. Uh, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody else, but if, if it's a lender that nobody's heard of, maybe you have to work a little bit harder to explaining to that, that uh, home seller who this lender is, right? Having that lender communicate with that other agent, letting them know that you're a strong buyer, that you're approved, and a little, give, them a, give them a little access of what, what they could say, because there's a lot of stuff that's confidential and it's to protect you, but the lender should be able to give out a little bit of information to show how strong your offer is to that potential or, or to that seller, to that seller and the seller's agent. Uh, so something else is like waiving the contingency. We cover that a little bit. Waiving the appraisal contingency, meaning you're willing to pay over appraised value or over list price and how much. It's time for you to uh, say, I, li I like the house. We want to get this house. So I just want to recap on what needs to be done. For one is, is going back to that lender and the approval. Make sure that's super strong. Make sure there's communication for that seller's agent and that seller who they know that they know who that lender is and that you're fully approved. Come in as strong as you can. Don't think, okay, I'm gonna get a counter offer. Somebody's gonna send me back an offer. Let's, let's start here. Those are not strategies for this market. For this market, you wanna come in as strong as you can. You go sleep on it and see if you're willing to go even a little bit higher on your offer or stronger in your offer. It's not just price. It's not just price. There's other points in that contract. Talk about, um, find out how their closing is going for that seller if they need to move as soon as possible because they're they got a job uh, at another state or hey they still need to find another place to live and you might need to extend that closing or allow them to stay there after the closing a little bit so those are those are little things you want to find out and have your agent your good realtor should be able to find that out for you and see how that offer should look right um something else is uh okay so going back to the appraisal uh that's already waived but uh inspection so inspections uh, there's people, if there's already an inspection report that was done maybe a few weeks ago or a month ago, it might be uh, an idea talk to talk about this with your e realtor. Every every case is a little different. It might be wave uh, inspections. Doesn't mean you can't inspect the house, but that means that you can't back out of your offer because of an inspection issue. So if it's a clean house, maybe just a few years old, it might not be a bad idea. But again, to talk to your agent, find out if that's an option for you or not. As a realtor, I do always recommend that you get an inspection done. Uh, but it might not. But the option period is what uh, you might want to waive, if possible, or if, if it's an option, right? So um, it's, it's also the, another thing is, if you start asking for things up front, don't ask for anything up front. If you come in like, okay, I'll buy your house, but uh, clean my carpets, uh, trim the, the bushes and the trees, uh, and uh, paint here, paint there, something simple, not very expensive. But to a home seller, is going to be like, okay, they're asking me for this right now. What's going to happen down the line? So come in with this offer as clean as possible. Or offer as clean as possible. Uh, another strategy is uh, there's negotiation points in the contract. For example, like, who's paying for the title policy? So you might offer the seller, hey, I'll pay for the title policy versus you. So that saves them some money. And that's also a good strategy for you to, to come in and, and offer and, and that looks really good for the offer because that's going to increase your net a little bit. Okay, uh, going uh, going back to the the timelines. So find out when they need to move. Does this seller need to move uh, out of the house immediately? Do they need to move out of the house? And maybe they need to find another house before they they could really sell theirs. So maybe you could allow them to stay a little longer even after closing, or work out a, a temporary uh, rental agreement. There's a lot of ways to do that, but be flexible on the moving date. So if you're finding a house in this market, you need to have an agree arrangement for temporary housing, even if it's short term, like short term rentals, Airbnbs, uh, whatever you want to call them. Find that arrangements for yourself to accommodate to that seller. That's very important. Very, very important. Those are some tips that I have to come in as a buyer for having a strong offer in today's market. Uh, it's, it's still possible to get a house. The, I really like reiterate this. I talked about this at the beginning of the video. Don't get discouraged. You'll find a house. I've been putting people in homes, home buyers in homes for the last few years when the market has been just all over the place, real crazy, complete seller's market, and people are still buying homes. So don't get discouraged. 
And uh, I hope you like this video, like this information. If you do, please subscribe, comment, let me know what you need to uh, or what you want to learn or what other videos I should make of. And uh, like it and share it.